Our, our conversation is continuing uh, around this book called The Mystery of the Shemitah. This is our offer to you this month. Uh, today, mm. as we're looking at this, mm. Joe Amaral joining me now. Uh, Joe, um, let's, re, let's refine this or redefine sure. or revisit this. What is Shemitah? Yeah, Shemitah sounds like, a, <laughs> like an odd word, and that happens in Hebrew. You know, yeah. uh, People say, well, Joe, you're, you're so into Israel, Hebraic roots. How come you've never come on Huntley Street? How come you've never written a book about the Shemitah? Although I knew what the Shemitah was, because it's in the Bible. Well, it, what does it mean? Well, Shemitah, it, it's a seventh year of rest. Okay. Just like in, in the six days of creation, then we have the seventh day as rest. God gave six years to work the land, but the seventh year he gave that as a rest. Okay. And that in that seventh year, that restitution was to be made. Debts were to be forgiven. Uh, financial debts were to be wiped out. So it's, it's all about blessing and freedom. And I think it's important for us as believers to really, uh, not just to understand the book, but to actually get the book and, and read it for yourself because there are some undeniable historical, um, oh, what's the word, the, the, the connections that we just cannot dismiss. Two plus two equals four. Two, you might not like that, but it is four. All right, so um, he, he, Rabbi Khan, the author, taught millions of people on this book. Yeah. The mystery of the Shemitah. Now, the mystery ties in with these calendars of seven years or 49 years, whatever they are. That's the right, the biblical he, pattern, and, he, yeah. and he analyzes them and diagrams them in the book. Uh, we, 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 we went to Rabbi Khan and we said, can you, can you tell us about the great world shakings that he yeah. shares here? Big stuff that many of us have lived through as it pertains to the Shemitah. Here's what he had to say. The word Shemitah can mean the shaking. Could it actually give us the times of great world shakings? Well, the Shemitah of 1917 marks the decisive turning point year in the greatest shaking of nations in world history, the First World War. And there you see a rise of nations, fall of nations. You see the fall of the Russian Empire. You see uh, Britain at the, uh, at the point of bankruptcy, and and Britain goes from being the greatest creditor nation, and that that switches over to America becomes the greatest creditor nation, rises. The world economy shifts to America as a result of that war. America comes out ready to become the the, the superpower that it takes its first step onto the world stage in that form that will lead ultimately to its becoming the world superpower. Rise of nations, fall of nations. If you then look at 1945, another key Shemitah year, the world is again in the middle of a great shaking, the greatest shaking in world history, the Second World War. And that conflict began actually in 1938, when Hitler began seizing Austria and seizing Czechoslovakia. It's the beginning, beginning of this conflict the Shemitah, that cycle will go on for seven years. The, the Shemitah will go for seven years. The Shemitah will end in 1945. The war will end in 1945. The Shemitah will, will end in September 1945. The war will end in September 1945. The Shemitah will end the first week of September 1945. The war, the Second World War, will end the same week. Kind of rises and falls together. And then when they have the the final act that seals the war when they have the victory procession with America and Russia at the end of the war, the only time that was right at the end of that war, in September, they marched through Berlin on September 7th. September 7th seals everything. September 7th is Elul 29, the end of the seven-year cycle that began in 1938. And what happens with World War II? What do you see again? The fall of nations, the fall of empires. You're going to see the collapse of of empires throughout the world, the European empires, and the rise of new powers, the rise of America to the world superpower, rise of Russia to world superpower, the beginning of the atomic age, a new economic world order takes hold, and a whole new world ushered in. All right, so Joe, people, people yeah. just go through that, and you know, it, it, it's like, what in the world? Yeah, it hurts your brain a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's there. Yeah, it's, it's all there. tied back into a Hebrew calendar, Jewish calendar. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the thing about what Rabbi Khan is doing. And people need to understand. Uh, first of all, I really want to encourage people, get the book for yourself. Don't take just what Joe is saying or what John is saying. Get the book for yourself and read the facts. Read the historical accounts and these crossovers. 
He's talking about the world wars, the falling of economies, and they just so happen to fall on specific dates. Now, people say to me, Joe, why should I get this book? Why should I want to read it? Why do I want to know anything about this Shemitah year? I'm not Jewish. I don't live in Israel, the Middle East. This has nothing to do with me. Ah. This has a lot to do with you. Yeah. Because what this does for me as a Christ follower, as somebody who reads the Bible, and we're specifically talking about the Torah and the Old Testament, is that we see that God is true to his word. God is true to what he says he's going to do. If he says that every seven years or every 49 years on this, this uh, year of the Shemitah, that I'm going to restore you back to your land, I'm going to give back to you what you're owed, everything the enemy took for you, I'm, I'm going to give back to you, that gives me confidence as a Christian. So when, when I read a book like this, I'm like, wow, God actually keeps his promises. And it's important for me as a believer to, to believe and understand that. And the book tells us that what happens in the next 10 or 11 months is very critical too. What's taking place in oh, yeah. this year of the end of 2015 on into the first parts and mid parts of 2016. Yeah, well he talks about, well I shouldn't say he, the Bible talks about something called a year of Jubilee. So you have the six years of work, one year of rest. Six years of work, one year of rest. You do that over seven Shemitah cycles, which is 49. And then, and then you hit the 50th year. From the 49th year to the 50th year, you live in this blessing, this thing called uh, Jubilee, where God restores land back to you. And what I found just absolutely fascinating, and, and he details it like he, he really goes for <laughs> it, it in does. the book. Yeah, it's it, deep. Yeah, it's a tough read, but I mean, if you, if you just stick with it and you read it, in 1967, we had this year of, of Jubilee. And I'd never seen this before, but yet it's in the Bible. And God talks about restoring, giving back to the Jewish people, specifically in, in this example. And what happened in June 1967? In 1967, we have the Six Day War, and what people thought was impossible That's for right. the first time in over 2,000 years, Israel regains control of Jerusalem their ancient homeland, their ancient home city. That can't be a coincidence. That, that, that's something remarkable. And, and he details here in the book over and over again all these things that God has done. So war, stock market crashes, 9-11. Yeah. I mean, it, it on and on it goes. And, and you look at this and you read it, and I'm like you. I went, what? what? But then I started reading it. Yeah. And I started putting with a biblical lens as he does. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the most intriguing things I've ever read. You, you can't put yeah. it down. I mean, when people say, oh, this doesn't apply to me. Stark market crashes, wars, 9-11. How much more can it apply to you? And, you know, we've talked and prayed a lot about this. This isn't about putting fear in people's heart. No. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It's putting confidence in people's hearts. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Knowing that God acts in certain ways gives us confidence to know that He will be a faith. He'll be faithful and do what He said He's going to do. I can move forward confidently, knowing that God is in control, and I don't and have to be afraid. In, and has been in control. Has been in control. And can, and we can look back over the corridor of time with great confidence, knowing that none of these world events has hit our Lord by surprise. That's right. Now, God didn't lean over the edge of heaven and go, wow, I didn't oh, know that no. was going to happen. No, and then, but, but you can look back over a biblical calendar and begin to see these things shape up. And without setting dates, without the tackiness or incorrectness right. of that, you can look into the future with great faith knowing that as these things unfold, mm -hmm. we see the coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We see him as he is. Yeah, you know, no, no man knows the, the day or the hour. Jesus said that. He stressed that. And we stress that here at Huntley Street as well. No man knows the day or the hour, but we can know the season. And so I want to encourage people to really get, get a copy of this book, read it. The, the facts and the history speak for itself. Well, we want you to get a copy of this. We hope that you'll call us or you'll go online. The Mystery of Shemitah, 